I'm Mark Dalrymple. I'm a programmer and instructor at the Big Nerd Ranch. My first dream job as a kid was being a physician, being a doctor like my dad. But he brought an Apple II home one day when I was in high school, and it's like, no, I don't want to do medicine anymore. I want to be a programmer. Right after college, I went to work for a small um, startup on the East Coast of the United States that was called Visix, and they did essentially Macintosh-style programming and toolkits and apps, but for Unix workstations. Um, I spent five years there, and that formed the core of pretty much everything I've done afterwards. So it was a shop that was had a very strong emphasis on performance. So the CEO of the company was just obsessed with software performance. And so that was absolutely essential for me to like understand the you know, computational complexity and how that can affect software development, as well as looking at not only micro optimizations, but the whole gestalt of a system. Coco Heads is a international Mac and iOS programming community, and it pretty much started almost by accident. I'm in western Pennsylvania. Um, I just gotten laid off from a dot-com job and was wanting to get into uh, Macintosh consulting. And the only way you can do that kind of stuff is to make contacts. And what's a great way to make contact is through users groups. So I looked around and there was a really, there's a thriving Linux users group, there was a Mac users group, but nothing for programmers. So I came across a CMU student um, who goes by the name Agent M. He was really into Macintosh programming as well. And I asked him, do you know of any um, programmers users groups in Pittsburgh? And he said, I don't know of any, let's start one. And wherever he went, he essentially opened a Cocoa Heads chapter. So now we've got um, 100 chapters on every continent except Antarctica now, all by accident. My career advice to pretty much every young person that I talk to is build and nurture a contact network because that's pretty much how you will find the really good opportunities. So my first cold call was, was Visix. After that, every single job and position for the next 20, 30 years was word of mouth. And so it's that building of the contacts through the meetups, the users groups, and just being a good person in general. And probably in terms of regrets would probably be my behavior as a young programmer. So right out of college, going into my first job, I was really big on object-oriented programming and software engineering kind of things, and I was kind of pretty full of myself. So I didn't necessarily treat my colleagues in terms of like bugs. No, bugs happen in software, and I was kind of intolerant of you know, designs that were not good, bugs that were there, um, performance that was not adequate. So things that I've, I've said I probably could have phrased in uh, you know, a more understanding manner. And in retrospect, you know, things that I've said, um, attitudes that I had, snarky comments um, that got back to people, those kind of make me sad to remember. Atone for my sins by a talk that I call the squishier side of software engineering. Um, that I've given to a number of college computer science uh, seminar classes, which talk about things like that, kind of the more humane side of uh, being a developer, of like getting out and meeting people, meeting people where they are, um, trying to connect on a personal level, and then behavioral things like um, you know, praise publicly and correct privately. So I have proficient balloon twister at the bottom of my resume. And that actually came up during uh, an interview situation, uh, actually at uh, Google. Hey, I see uh, proficient balloon twister at the bottom of your um, resume. Can you make me something? No. 
expecting me to be caught off guard. But I, you know, at the time I traveled with a, with a bag of balloons. I pulled out my baggy balloons like, what do you want? So in terms of when, I, like, when I'm in kind of like a hiring position, I look for that kind of stuff because you know, languages are fine. People can learn languages. I've got 20 languages on my resume. Toolkits, people can learn toolkits. Um, but it's like what makes them interesting, what makes them unique. And by you know, looking at their interests, you can kind of get an idea of how they attack problems. Like, are they really analytical about things? Or are they more of a get a gestalt and you know, see a big picture at once and then use that to you know, extrapolate software design or whatever? If you are interviewing now, um, then the best thing is to try to figure out what it is that they're wanting exactly. So the current trend now is take home problems. Check out this Git repo, add a feature, fix a bug, add a text or something, but you don't know if the company is looking for somebody who can implement a feature in four hours or if, some, or if they're looking for somebody who can analyze a problem space and figure out what is the best thing to do at this time. So, so you would ask, ask your recruiter, like, what is the goal of this? Because I've seen in a couple of situations of friends who they get the coding problem, the directions are kind of ambiguous. They solve it one direction. The company is actually looking for them to solve it in another direction and then it's like, oh, you didn't do it our way of what we were expecting, um, we're not going to hire you. Mm -hmm.